One of the most important ideas in all of mathematics is the distributive property. But what is it? And how can you use it? Let's cover some notation very quickly. There are many different ways of writing multiplication, primarily using the time symbol, or the asterisk, or the dot. But remember that having a variable like x after the letter is also a form of multiplication. What if we wanted to represent that x being an actual number or some group of numbers? This is where parenthetical multiplication comes in. I know, big word, but it's pretty simple. Where a number in front of the parentheses multiplies the number inside. You can imagine that because parentheses come before everything else, that everything else within this group might as well just be one number. This is important to understand and will come into play more later. Now that we have an understanding of group multiplication, let's take an expression and apply the distributive property. The expression 3 times the group of x plus 1 is a situation where we are required to use the distributive property to expand this expression into terms that we can actually use. The leading term is also known as the coefficient, which we can multiply individually to each term inside of the parentheses. Isn't that nifty? Our result is then simply 3 times x plus 3. But why does this work? I'll cover this just very quickly. Imagine for a second that x is a box filled with some number of tennis balls, and that 1 is a single tennis ball. The leading term in our group implies that we have three groups, so we can expand this out into addition. So we have three boxes of tennis balls and three leftover individual tennis balls. That's how the distributive property works. It's repeated addition of groups, just like how multiplication is repeated addition. The following section is a preview into how the distributive property can be taken further with greater applications. Let's distribute 3 plus x into 2 plus 2x. Where on earth do we even begin? Most people would result to a method known as FOIL, which stands for first, outer, inner, and last. I tend to stay away from this method since it becomes a bad habit later on. FOIL is only really useful when dealing with quadratic factors, which quickly falls apart when you have more than two pieces in each group, which I'll show later. Instead, I work from left to right. Start with 3 and distribute that value into 2 and 2x to get 6 plus 6x. Then do the same with x to get 2x plus 2x squared. Now combine like terms to get 2x squared plus 8x plus 6. We rearrange the 6 and the 2x squared because I like to have the powers in descending order. It doesn't matter, it's the same expression either way. This form uh, of distributive property is also called expansion because we are taking the factored form of the function and turning it into the expanded form. Let's look at two more higher level examples. Take x plus 1 squared. Oh, that's easy. It's obviously x squared plus 1, right? Square each term individually and voila, you're done. Unfortunately, it's not that easy. You cannot simply distribute a power in because it's not multiplication. Instead, it's a power. It's repeated multiplication. So instead, you have to recognize that it's a group multiplied by itself in this case. Remember how x squared is x times x? This is the same concept. Expanded, it looks more like x plus 1 times x plus 1. Now we can use the distributive property to get x squared plus 2x plus 1. Finally, we'll look at a multivariable problem. The group of 2x plus y minus 1 times the group of 3x plus 4y minus 1. Wow, that's, a, that's quite a few variables there. Quite a few terms. FOIL doesn't work. We have to just use the distributive property. We go from left to right, multiplying each term individually with themselves. But it's not that much different to how we were doing it normally. 
In the end, we multiply each of these terms to get 6x squared plus 8xy minus 2x plus 3xy plus 4y squared minus y minus 3x minus 4y plus 1. Remember, you're multiplying positives and negatives here, so your signs will change. Then you combine like terms, simplifying your expanded form into 6x squared minus 5x plus 11xy minus 5y plus 4y squared plus 1. This is a little look into the distributive property. Please share this to anyone you think may be in need of this information, and thank you for supporting me by watching this video.